uh, in your uh, news clips, the bracelet design of uh, overseas has been mentioned uh, several times. What do you think is the relationship between wristwatch integral design and the aesthetics of a bracelet? So I think to uh, speaking about the overseas, obviously um, uh, we launched the overseas in 1996 and it was definitely a steel watch with an integrated bracelet. So we had no uh, interchangeable system. Things or times have changed. And I think that our clients, they do appreciate the versatility the possibility to be able to change the, the metal bracelet to a rubber one or a leather one. And this is for this reason that we have developed in the latest uh, generation of the overseas that we launched in 2016, this uh, self-interchangeability uh, system, which really allows you to change the aesthetic of your watch in a few seconds. So after, you know, it's a matter of, of personal taste. Personally speaking, today I'm wearing overseas and I really do appreciate the design of the bracelet, which is for me, very much part of the whole design of the watch. But it doesn't mean that to wear it on a rubber strap will really destroy the design of the watch. It's just a matter of personal taste. So I think that there is nothing wrong into having such a sport elegant watches influenced by the 70s, most of them, which were exclusively historically available on, on metal bracelets. The possibility to have them on different materials, I think this is an evolution of time and also an evolution of society in the sense that uh, these sport elegant watches now we appreciate today in our lifetime to be able to have one single watch which is fitting for all occasions. Okay. And I think this versatility helps a lot into transforming your sports watch into a more dress watch for the evening, for example. In a way, your original design is an integrated uh, design. I mean, from the case to the bracelet, yes. it's integrated, looks integrated, but uh, the other way, you can make it interchangeable yes. to suit every kind of occasion. Exactly, this is exactly the point. This is what we wanted to reach with the third generation of the overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why we have been working so hard into creating a perfect integration, which doesn't hurt the whole design of the watch. And the other question is that the Maltese cross elements are overseas is both iconic and beautiful. Gem setting seems to weaken this advantage. What do you think of this? Of course, I would say the bezel is uh, influenced by the design of the Maltese cross. But this is an inspiration. I don't think that this is a, a very immediate uh, representation of the Maltese cross. And of course, when we are setting this bezel, it, uh, it creates a different aesthetics. But the shape of the bezel uh, doesn't change. So uh, I think, uh, again, it's a different expression of the bezel. But honestly, sincerely speaking, I don't think that that is very much weakening the, the full aesthetic of the overseas. It's just a different perception. Okay. In your Mitita, legend of a Chinese zodiac. Yes, they are. You know, we started this uh, this series, the Mitita, um, the legend of the Chinese zodiac, with the year of the snake. So that makes close to uh, 12 years ago, and so we are coming to the end of the cycle. So the dragon uh, is the latest sign of the series. And uh, of course, as you are mentioning, this is the most, probably in your culture, the most important sign. So for us, it was highly important to make sure that the dragon that we are going to represent by hand engraving would be a um, faithful representation of what you are expecting from us. So there has been um, a lot of research into finding, um, if I may say, the right dragon. And uh, obviously, we had some exchanges with our China colleagues here to make sure that uh, the choice uh, would be uh, perfectly uh, respectful of the Chinese culture. We could start with the, with the past. So obviously in the past, um, watches with the multiple uh, complications, for example, a chronograph with a minute repeater, for example, they were essentially on pocket watches because of question of space. Because this kind of combination of complications uh, was not possible to downsize to, uh, into a wristwatch until uh, I would say the 30s or even later. So we have examples uh, in the past of grand complications which were most of them on uh, let's say pocket watches. But the downsizing of complications started with uh, the chronograph and the minute repeater which uh, arrived the chronograph in the second decade of the 20th century and the minute repeater as well at the end. In our history, we have examples of uh, mostly chronographs and calendar watches, talking about complications as wristwatches in the 30s, 40s and, and later. But in the modern days, or neo-vintage years, the, the rebirth of fine watchmaking uh, has been mostly influenced by 
the taste of collectors for grand complications. So we restarted to do uh, grand complications in the beginning of the 1990s. And uh, pretty soon we started to uh, combine complications such as a minute repeater with a perpetual calendar, for example, or a chronograph with a perpetual calendar or things like that. In our portfolio, um, obviously not all the, the collections are able to um, accept grand complications because of the volume that they need. So this is why we have uh, most of them into the traditional collection, which is really designed in order to be able to receive uh, grand complications. And uh, in addition, um, we have the Le Caminotier workshop, which is uh, really the place in which we can really um, express our taste and, and expertise for grand complications by creating unique pieces. So these are really two areas in which we are very much um, exploring uh, grand complication. It's possible to do uh, grand complications as well in patrimony, even if the design is very much demanding, because we have to make sure that the proportions and the purity of the design is not harmed by complications by definition, which is thicker than a normal watch. So that's why we had the minute repeater in the patrimony collection, and we have the perpetual calendar as well. You have mentioned a, a, a jargon which is very interesting, Neo Vintage. Yep. Can you share more information about this uh, jargon? Yes. So the Neo Vintage watches, are, which are um, considered watches from the 1990s mostly, they are not um, yet consistent. When we think about vintage, we think about the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, possibly 70s. But uh, neon vintage is, um, I think, a trend which is uh, uh, very much growing. Uh, and I'm talking about watches from the early 90s. And we have some great examples at Vachon Constantin, such as, for example, uh, jumping hours, or uh, mill tributaries, uh, chronographs, etc. Retrograde, et uh, we started in the year 2000. So it's a bit, uh, it's still possible to incorporate them into a neo vintage, yes, very much. So, in a way, Vachon Constantin has already been a, a step on the way of uh, neo vintage. We are, of course, interested into neo vintage watches on the secondary market because we are following very much a secondary market. Mm -hmm. And also, we have um, an offer of uh, vintage watches at Vachon Constantin, which name is uh, Les Collectionneurs, so the collectors in English in which we are acquiring vintage watches and also neo-vintage watches. And then we restore them and we offer them for sale with a two years guarantee and a blockchain certificate. So, so we are getting more and more success with the neo-vintage watches uh, because I think the public is more and more interested in these watches. Uh, would you like to say some word about uh, Marshall Kunta and to our audience? Uh, yes, I'm fine. As you know, so we are a maison which was founded in 1755, so close to 270 years ago. And since the beginning, you know, we always had the greatest standards in terms of quality, technicality, but we also love uh, decorating crafts. And we have uh, great examples here in Shanghai at Watches and Wonders of the diversity yet consistency of the watchmaking art of Ashkenazi. Well, great. Thank you for your time. That was a pleasure. Thank okay. you so much really for the question.